Hey everyone, it's Kayla back with another video. Um, today we are actually going to be making some mini pies just because with the holidays coming up you do want a little snack for, snack I should say dessert, but we all know that we'll probably be munching these in between making any of the uh, big feasts we're planning for the holidays. And if not, it's just a good thing to munch on while you question your life decisions. Now, <laughs> let's go ahead and start by preheating our oven. For once, do that first at 425 degrees to start for the first pie we're going to make today, which is apple pies. They're not going to be the big giant apple pies that you usually see in supermarkets. They're going to be little mini ones, kind of like the ones you can buy at McDonald's, but better. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and start with that today. But first, we're gonna make our homemade crust. Now this crust is pretty simple, super easy. Um, I'm actually going to be using this crust recipe for all the pies we'll be making today. So it's really important you just pay attention to that because you don't make it right, will not taste good, and it's going to not, uh, not turn out well. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing you are going to need, you may think, is flour. But no, you need the thing that you're gonna make the crust with. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our handy dandy food processor. Um, I don't know where I got it. It's here. There we go. <laughs> so first we're gonna go ahead and add our dry ingredients inside. Um, we're gonna start off with the salt because it's easier to pour in. So it's 1 8 teaspoon of salt, not tablespoon, teaspoon. I've made that mistake before. You don't want a salty pie, trust me. So 1 8 teaspoon salt. Then we're gonna go ahead and add some sugar sugar. This is kinda just to sweeten up the crust just a little bit, just, just a tad bit. So it's gonna be one tablespoon of sugar, not one teaspoon, like I said with the salt. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add our flour. We have two and a half cups of the Red Mills gluten-free flour. Okay, so now we're gonna add eight tablespoons of butter. Cold, make sure it's cold. I know I usually say room temp for everything. Cold butter is important. So go ahead and cube those up and add those right in. Get all of it in there, like so. And then we are going to go ahead and just blend it up a bit before we start adding our water. So let me do that. Cue the elevator music while you wait for this. Okay, as you can see, it looks like a powder and not actually crust, right? It's, it's still not right. And that's why we need the water. Now for water, I, I just kind of got a cup, but you're gonna add tablespoon by tablespoon. Uh, let's see if I have one of those. <laughs> okay, so funny story. I don't have any tablespoons at the ready at the moment. So I am going to add water little by little until it looks like crust dough. Don't do this. Do as I say, not as I do. That is the lesson of today. So we're gonna go ahead and just add little by little, tablespoon by tablespoon, that should be good for now. And just kind of start mixing every once in a while. You don't wanna overdo the water or else it's, it's gonna be soup. We're going to go ahead and chill this just so it's a little easier to work with once we get to putting it into the little, whatever they're called, the little tins. That's the word. So we're going to go ahead, place it in there. Okay, so now that our dough is all done, we have it right here. I'm going to start to just kind of wrap it up, press it into a little ball. While we're doing this, this is a good reminder to go in, like, and subscribe, and ring the bell down below so that you don't miss any of my videos. Um, along with, leave a comment on what you want to see, whether it's what kind of baked goods you'd like to see from me, or if you would like to just go ahead and share your opinion on how these turned out for you guys. I also am planning on doing challenges later on. So let me know what you guys think, and let me know what you want to see next on my channel. Alright, so we're gonna take our dough, not drop it, I've done that too many times, 
we're gonna take it and we're gonna chill it for a few minutes while we work on one of our fillings. I'm gonna work on the apple pie filling first just because it's a little easier to work with. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a second. Our dough is in the, I was about to say oven, not in the oven, in the fridge. We're gonna go ahead and start making our apple pie filling. Now for the apple pie filling, super, it's super easy. You do have to use the stove top, which is one extra step I don't like to use. But we're gonna do it anyways. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and have to use two, I made a mixture of two teaspoons of cinnamon with one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg. You're gonna go ahead and add that. Mix three tablespoons of flour with half a cup of unsalted butter or eight tablespoons of butter. We're gonna add one cup of granulated sugar, one fourth cup of water, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the 1 8 teaspoon of salt in there too, just so that you know it's all mixed together and we don't have to worry about it too much. Once that is all done and boiling and well mixed, we're gonna lower the heat and let it simmer for a bit while we get our pies ready to go. Awesome, so while our pie is, our pie, our pie isn't baking yet guys, I am just very tired today. Now, while our pie filling is over the heat and simmering, make sure you check on that every once in a while. You don't want it to burn and just give it a little mix real quick and it should be good. Right now though, we're gonna go ahead and start and make our pumpkin pie filling. The difference between the apple pie that we're making right now is that you can bake the uncooked crust with the filling all together at the same time. This, you have to bake the crust a little bit before and then eventually go into baking the um, baking the pie with it. So while the apple pie is gonna be in the oven, we'll go ahead and bake the crust for the pumpkin. But for now, we're gonna just focus on making our pumpkin pie. I'm not gonna be using my stand mixer today just because there's no really ingredients that's super hard to mix. The first thing you're gonna need is pumpkin puree. I did not prepare the pumpkin puree like I should have last night but because I wanted it to be fresher so I'm opening our can of our pumpkin right here right now so it looks like that we're gonna do a full can I have a 15 ounce can that's how much you're gonna want to do and just I need a spoon again <laughs> guys and you're just gonna kind of scoop it out be careful because you don't want to cut your fingers on the edges of the can. They are very sharp despite popular belief. So just like that. Yeah, pumpkin. I don't know why, but it kind of smells like tomato soup to me, and I think I don't think that's supposed to be what it smells like. Anywho, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and add our next few ingredients. Um, we're gonna clink, 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 clink. We're gonna start off with our little mixture. It's gonna be with one teaspoon, sorry, two teaspoons cinnamon. I did one fourth teaspoon of our nutmeg and one eighth teaspoon of cloves and then half a teaspoon of ginger. It smells really good. Very uh, fall and Christmassy. Sorry, holiday y. Um, and then we're also going to add our 1 8 little pinch of salt too, just so that it's easier to mix and you don't have a bunch of glasses clanking together. You'll notice that a lot of the fall pastries and stuff have the cinnamon and nutmeg. Those are two very important spices I like to keep in my cupboard all fall and winter season long because that is all I use, I swear. <laughs> Honestly, I... I'm surprised I haven't run out yet. So next we're gonna go ahead and add one fourth cup of our granulated sugar right in. You'll notice this recipe is very sweet. If you'd like, you can lower the amount of sugar a little bit. Like with the one cup of brown sugar, you can add anywhere from half a cup to one cup. I'm doing the full cup because honestly my sweet tooth today is very high. So just plop it right in. 
And I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick mix. We don't have all of our ingredients yet, but just a quick little mixeroni. Start getting everything incorporated. And it's going to kind of start turning the brownish color. That's okay. Here, I'll show you. It has like a darker tone than the original pumpkin. That's just from the brown sugar and all of our spices. So don't worry about that. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add my eggs next. I didn't know that pumpkin pie had eggs, to be honest, for the longest time. But yes, you're going to need two eggs. Um, you can do them at room temperature. I forgot to. It's probably better that you do. So another quick mix. Just like so. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And I know it doesn't look very appetizing right now, but I promise that once you bake it, it'll look delicious. And if it doesn't, you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and mix, 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 mix. And next, we're gonna go ahead and add evaporated milk. Uh, you can add, I would stick to the measurements of one cup. This right here is a little over a cup, um, it's about three-fourths of one of these cans, which is a 360-gram can. So just use about three-fourths of it. Or get an actual cup measuring uh, measurement and use that. Oh, there we go. Actually, yeah, let me do that. I'm going to grab a cup. Handy-dandy measuring cup. And just pour in a cup. And the rest, you can save for later. Ooh. Ooh, this looks good. I'm excited, guys. I love pie. And, like, I know a lot of people don't like pumpkin pie necessarily, but I love it. So we're going to go ahead and keep mixing. It looks very liquidy. That's okay. It'll be fine. Everything's fine, guys. I maybe added too much. No, no, I didn't. Yeah, just keep mixing. Keep mixing. And look, we got our nice, yummy pumpkin pie filling. It actually looks good. I'm proud of us, guys. And if you're making this along with me, I applaud you. You are doing amazing. Keep it up, guys. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. Okay, so I'm going to set this to the side. And we're going to grab our apple filling mixture. And I also have our apples right here. You're going to need about, if you're doing a large batch, four cups of apples. Um, because I am doing a smaller batch with the pie crust, I only did about two cups. And they're going to be smaller pies anyways, so you don't need that much. But make sure they're chopped really well. And I took the skins off of mine. That's just the way I like it. Go ahead and do it however you like. But I'll be back with the crust. Alrighty, so our dough is out of the fridge. If your dough is cool to the touch, it should be good to go. If not, you can leave it in for another 10-15 minutes. Just make sure to keep your eye on the pie filling because I had to take mine off. Um, it's pretty good now, but we're going to go ahead and let that sit for a minute while we roll out our dough. So we're going to set this. I went ahead and floured a little area right here so that it doesn't stick to it because you'll notice that as we work with it more and it begins to kind of warm up, it's going to stick a little bit. But we're going to go ahead. We're just going to start off with a small little handful of dough. Pat it down a bit. Place it right on top. And we're going to take a rolling pin. I went ahead and floured the edges already. Just because, again, you don't want it to stick. I really shouldn't have done it on this surface. Don't. Just do it on the countertop, guys. It'll be fine. But just roll it out a bit. Sideways. And if you notice your dough is starting to stick, just go ahead and reflower it. Kind of try and get as much dough off as you can. Throw some more flour, like so, and just kind of roll it out so it's a nice kind of thin crust. 
You don't want it too thick or else you're going to get more crust and less pie. And to be honest, that does not sound appetizing to me. So, just like so, we have a little plate of dough. And I'm going to go ahead and be using some cupcake tins. These, to me, are just easier. They already look like little pie holders. So we're going to use these to go ahead and make our pies. I forgot what we were doing for a minute. Go ahead and start spraying these down if you don't want them to stick because you can't really use anything else. So spray them down now. I gotta go do that. So mine are all sprayed down. A good thing to do would have been to pre-measure mm -hmm. how big they are. Mm -hmm. I did not do this. So I, ooh, there we go. You want it a little bigger than the little tin itself because you got a little dip, you know, so you gotta, I'll show you. So I'm gonna use this glass to cut out my circle. I'm gonna gently, if you have trouble lifting it, it's okay. Gently lift it up and look, we got a little circle right there. I gotta go ahead, place it inside and just kind of push it in. Be Try and be a little gentle with it. But you'll notice that I didn't roll mine out thin enough because, let me show you, that way you can go ahead and just tap, tap, tap and push all of, make this crust thinner yourself by just patting. Make sure that, you know, there's no holes or cracks in it. Just tap, tap, tap all the way around. Kind of get that little border going. See how these turn out. <laughs> and voila, you have your little pie, pie holder. <laughs> there we go. I don't know what they're actually called, so don't quote me on that. But we're gonna call it a pie holder today. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill all of these ones out. I, and then we're gonna start filling. Okay, so I started filling up my little pie crust indents. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to be filling them just so I can get these in the oven and we can get that process rolling. Um, so I have some chopped up apples and we're going to go ahead and toss them in. I'm going to fill it pretty generously because I really like apples. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and just fill them up as much as I can. Don't worry if you need more apples. You can always just replace it with um, the pumpkin filling. Don't be scared though to over, well, don't overfill these because it's going to be a little messy. But go ahead, fill them generously. Uh, let me show you. Like so. Just gonna get them nice and packed in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that filling we made earlier. And I'm just using a, it's kind of like a ladle, whoop, a ladle of the filling. And we're just gonna kind of pill it in over top. And let that kind of sink in. Kind of cover the entire top with it and let it fill up and you'll add more if need be. So we're just gonna go ahead fill these up and now for the topping of the pies you'll notice that a lot of apple pies have the crust topping whether it's a lattice or it's just a regular top. We're going to do a regular top today, and you'll notice that's why I kind of, I'll show you in a second, have it, the crust filling over the sides, is so that we can clamp the top on together. When you do that, though, just make sure you add a little bit of holes to let the pie breathe. Um, I'm kind of getting a little messy with these, so just be careful when you're doing it. You don't want to go overboard, but you also don't want to be stingy about it. Because I'll tell you, I've had way too many apple pies with too much apple and not enough 
good kush filling. Put them in the oven. We're gonna start off at 425, like I told you to preheat the oven before. And we're gonna start off these ones for about five minutes, five to eight minutes on that heat. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it down to 350 for an extra about 10 minutes. If you notice that the top and the sides are golden brown, go ahead and take them out. Don't let them burn. But as long as they're turning golden brown, you should be good to go. Now, well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up. And Okay, so I did do some crust to do little pumpkin fillings right there. Um, what you're going to want to do is after you've put the, if I can set that down, once you put these in for about, I put them in for about seven to eight minutes. Once you that's done, change your oven to 350 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and put the pumpkin filling inside of these open slots right here. I'm just doing it all on the same kind of pan so that you can see better. I also have two open apple pie dishes because I did not have enough crust and that's what I'm doing now is I'm making more crust off to the side so that I can make more pumpkin pie so it should be set. So if you're planning on making more than 16 mini pies Double the crust recipe, that's going to make your life so much easier. So we're going to go ahead and fill up the little pumpkin ones. I'm just using a spoon. Just fill it up to, you can fill it up, no, don't do it all the way, but you can do pretty full because it won't overflow, you know? Okay, so little update, the pie is kind of overflowed. Let me show you. <laughs> I definitely overfilled them for the apple ones. So uh, correction on saying don't be afraid to overfill them. Don't overfill them because this will happen. It, it's not fun. <laughs> But, on another note, we did get some really good ones that came out. Here are a few of my examples. We have the plain apple with a yummy top. It kind of looks like a muffin, to be honest. And then you have open top apple pie. I don't know why I thought it looked cute, so I decided to try that one out. And you have the very scrumptious looking pumpkin right there. And although the crust isn't as brown as I'd like it and golden that's okay these are done um so <laughs> we're gonna leave the pretty ones aside for everyone else to try I'm going to go ahead and try out the messier ones they still look really good and they smell good too like <laughs> my oven my kitchen has smelled like fall just fall is the only way to describe it. But like, it's the perfect little palm size little treat that you can try and have everyone else try as well. Um, just some things that we learned is don't overfill your mini pies. It's going to take a while for me to clean those up. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my uploads. I will be planning to upload more stuff for the holidays, like some sugar cookies. Um, that's going to be one of the upcoming videos. So cheers, everyone. I hope you enjoy your holiday season, and I will see you next time. Have a good day.